Hello, my name is Tuna Yıldırım. Today, I'm going to make a presentation about the consequences of dehydration, hydration on bone anisotropy, and implications of this on the sublimular organization of mineralized collagen fibrils. To make an introduction, first look at our main goals here. Our main goals are to calculate mechanical properties of the bone, such as anisotropic ratio and flexural modules, and determine the polar orientation's effects on these mechanical properties. To understand that, first we have to understand the structure of the bone. Uh, so you see the structure of the bone here. We got our osteon here, which is our main focus in this study. In the osteon, we, if we if zoom on, we see our lamellas, which are layer by layer. And in the center, we got Havertzian channel. And in these layers, we got our sublamellas. Here's a footage of uh, lamella. And in the lamella, we got our sublamellas, which are aligned like that. Uh, this is a simplification for modeling that I took from my instructor's study. And in the modeling section, I'll give you more detail about that. Uh, I made the modeling with a program which is called Fusion 360. Uh, the modelings are made to calculate anisotropy ratios and different models are built to see the differences in the results. In model A, uh, here's my hydroxyapatite in my sublamella, which is the fiber of this composite, and the collagen, which is, a, which is the matrix of this composite. And we said that dehydration is going to happen. And when dehydration happens, the reduction of length will be in the direction of the thickness of hydroxyapatite. So for model A, that uh, reduction of length will occur in y-axis. And this is uh, this first model for 30 degree intervals that are built up. And these are our axes. And this is model A. We, uh, these are 10 degrees intervals to get more accurate and detailed results for anisotropy ratios. When a collagen is uh, oriented 10 degrees around y-axis, the hydroxyapatite, which is shown here, is oriented around all of the global axes with the order of uh, z, x, and y. And you can see the order there here. And this is my first contraction vector of my first sublimella for model A. These are my transformation matrices for the calculations. And this is a view from y-axis. You can observe that collagens are oriented around y-axis, 10 degrees intervals. And the, the thing about model A is that uh, by uh, the, uh, observing real footages, the first three sublamella is exactly the same with the last three. So this will also affect the results for model A. The situation is not observed for model B. So if we examine model B, the main difference is, is their starting coordinates. The first contraction vector of model B is in the x direction due to the thickness. And this is my contraction vector calculation here. And this is a view from uh, y axis. You can see the orientation again and the projections, which I will give you more details about them. And for model B, uh, all of the sublamellas are different, and you, we will see that in results as well. And to get more different results, uh, I cut the planes with different directions, both models actually, and I cut model A with a single cut which is in this direction and which makes a 45 degree angle with Z axis, you can see it like that. And here's uh, some other footage of my model A and I put a little video to show you the details. Here's my video. You can see that single cut affects all of the sublamellas at once, this is important because the experiment team done the exact same thing and we try to make a model to get accurate results with that. Sorry for repeating. And for model B, I applied the same cut. You can see the cut, one cut applying all the sublamellas and the hydration will occur in X direction as well. And uh, the experiment team had a problem when they applied different cuts, they get different results. So I wanted to see that for myself as well. And I applied a different cut and I apply a cut at this direction in Z and X directions, which also makes a 45 degrees angle. Then after this point, we'll examine the results, the ANR results. But after, before that, I'll show you how I did the, calculate the contraction vectors to calculate ANR. I draw 100 millimeter line on every sublamella and sh I show the projections on them on two planes. And you can see my drawings on sublamellas and you can see my projections on two planes. And you can, uh, I, de I determined uh, the contraction vectors by measuring the differences between a projection in all of the coordinates so I can calculate the INRs. My original length is uh, 100 millimeter. And from this point on, I'll give you details about the results. 
Uh, for model A, like I said, the first three sublamella is the same with the last three. So their contraction vector orientations are same. But uh, when we uh, examine ANR values, we have no value which is equal to 1. If ANR is equal to 1, that means the material is isentropic in those directions. For model A, we didn't observe that. And for model B, the situation is also same, but you can also see that the first three sublamella does not have the same orientation for model B, this was a detail, and no value of 1 is also observed here, which is also expected since bone is an anisotropic material. But when we apply a cut for model B, we get the anisotropy ratio of 1. The experimental team also get this result as well when they applied this cut. So this is nice to see that the model and the experiment matches itself. And when I apply another cut in B, I couldn't get the result of one as well as the experimental team. So the model matches the expectations. I, I can confirm that for myself. And after done that, we got our, I wanted to calculate the mechanical property flexure modules on osteon. I did it for five sublamolas, and I used the anisotropy ratios that I've calculated before to calculate that. Uh, here's uh, my osteon, layer by layer. These are my lamellas. In, in a lamella, there are five lamellas. These are my directions. This is my radius of curvature to calculate. And you can see the sublamellas are aligned like this in a layer. I made less sublamellas to calculate something simple than go into something complex. These are my orientations about y-axis for five sublamellas, and I use the contraction vectors uh, to find out which contributes the most to flexural modules calculations. And I also wanted to show that uh, flexural modules is dependent on ply alignment, but Young's modules is not. And I also wanted to find it out from my results. And from my results, uh, I found out that Young's modules is the same for both of the models, even though they have different orientations. Uh, I did it by applying rule of mixture, which I learned from mechanics of composites um, uh, lecture. And for flexural modules, it came out different for two models, two of the models. So this is also satisfying as well. Uh, for conclusions, uh, the study can lead to determine different kinds of mechanical properties using anisotropy ratios, uh, such as maybe a strength uh, or fracture strength uh, as well. And so we find out that some mechanical properties are directly affected from ply alignment and some are not affected at all. And we see that uh, the experimental and the modeling matches each other. And this is a good thing. And about what's next? Uh, other ANI results can be determined from cutting from different planes or cutting by different angles as much as possible because you can cut it from anywhere you like and the problem is that you're getting different results and this is the main objective of this future goal actually to determine understand this event and like I said other mechanical properties of the bone can also be determined from like I did for flexural modules thank you very much for listening